Well, welcome back. Well, the GDP is out. It was worse than expected. It's the second read for the first quarter GDP coming in below expectations with a contraction of 1.5 percent for the first quarter. Joining me right now to react is the former Council of Economic Advisors acting chairman and a Klein Hines a fellow at the Hoover Institution, Tyler Goodspeed. Tyler, good to see you. Your reaction to a contraction of one and a half percent in the first quarter GDP. Well, good to be with you, Maria. It's it's not entirely unexpected from my point of view, just because we have those really volatile components like the change in private inventories. That is the most volatile component of the most volatile component of GDP. And so it's, it's unpleasant. Uh, but I, I think in terms of this year, the inertial, better measured components of GDP, namely consumer spending and business investment, are still in positive territory. And I expect that to continue. So I think we avoid a recession or a technical recession in 2022, but I'm, I'm very concerned when we look beyond 2022 to 2023. Yeah, but look, Tyler, it's not what we call it, right? I mean, we could call it whatever we want. It's the way people feel. And right now they're going to the grocery stores and they're paying 20% higher for the price of eggs than they did a year ago. They're paying 17% higher for bacon than they did a year ago. They're paying 33% higher for the price of an airline ticket than they did a year ago. So, I mean, clearly wages going up and you've got a handful of companies raising wages are not doing much when you go to the grocery store and it's eaten up by all this inflation. Yeah, so Maria, you and I have been talking for for a long time now about declining real wages, declining inflation adjusted wages. We were talking about this uh, over a year ago. And the, the one silver lining had been that that was on average, whereas in the aggregate, uh, real compensation overall was still going up because of, of hiring. So there were more people working, even though on average they were earning less. Overall compensation was greater. That has changed in recent months. So now in recent months, real compensation of workers overall has declined because nominal wage gains have been eaten up by inflation. And I think that we have we have this uh, this strange gap between consumer spending, which has remained resilient and surveys of consumer sentiment, which are now at levels that we simply haven't seen since the Great Recession. And I think the only yeah. thing that has been propping up that, that sustaining that consumer resilience, that, that resilience in consumer spending has been the, the, the buffer of accumulated savings. But as that starts to dissipate and as these price pressures continue to build, I, it, it's tough to see that, that buffer remaining. Yeah, Brian Moynihan was with us a few minutes ago talking about the fact that people had more money in their account, in their savings account, uh, in, in, in this last few months than, than earlier. But look, uh, can you explain to me this reaction that we're seeing in markets? I mean, yesterday we heard from the Federal Reserve. Look at Treasury yields right now. I mean, we're seeing Treasury yields pull back. And yet we heard from the Federal Reserve yesterday uh, in the May minutes. Uh, and the Fed said pretty much that it was unanimous on the fact that they need 50 basis points hikes coming in the months of June, July, potentially September. They also use the word restrictive, saying that it, this 40-year high inflation may uh, require restrictive policy. And yet we got the Dow Industrials up 175 points, and you got the 10-year down uh, seven-tenths of a basis point. Yeah, so I, th I think it is now baked in that, as, as you noted, we're going to get we're going to get the 50s in June and July. The, the real question is what happens in September? And, you know, we, we had some of these whispers from the likes of Bostic that, that maybe we have a pause, wait and see, come come autumn. We had some comments from Bullard last week that maybe we get cuts in 2023. Look, the, the Fed in the 1960s and the 1970s tried and many times to get a handle on inflation. They said, this, this is it. This is, the, this is the time that we're going to get this under control. And until Paul Volcker, every single time, they, they had a pause or they had a U-turn. And, and the median time yeah. from the start of a tightening cycle to a pause or a U-turn was eight and a half months. And there were various reasons for the U-turn of the pause. It was because mm. unemployment was ticking up. It was because markets weren't functioning particularly well. It was because inflation was coming down, even though it wasn't back to, to, to normal levels. So if history is a guide here, I, I think markets are probably looking at the mood music and thinking that there might be a pause or a U-turn later this year.
No, that's what Stephanie Pomboy's been saying, Dagan. Jump in here, Dagan. Yeah, I was going to answer your question, Maria, and ask Tyler what is that the, the Treasury market is focused on an impending recession while the equity investors are still flush with cash because, again, the Fed hasn't really started to destroy money yet with the balance sheet reductions. Tyler, can we expect anything out of the Biden administration that will help the country in terms of uh, getting us back on track and even, I mentioned it earlier, even deregulation or alleviating the regulations that have been put in place? Uh, I, I'm not holding my breath. There are things that they could do. I mean, they, they could expand on the domestic energy production front. There is still a ton that they could do in, in terms of facilitating domestic energy production. You know, the, historically, there was a very, very tight correlation between the price of West Texas intermediate crude and oil rig counts in the United States. That relationship completely broke down in 2021, because why the heck would you be drilling or, or, or installing new, new domestic energy production capacity in the United States, given that regulatory burden? I would be signaling tax certainty by signaling to markets that we, we will extend some of the, the business tax provisions of, of the 2017 tax law. I would be signaling to, to households that we'll make some of those, those marginal personal income tax rate reductions that were introduced in 2017 permanent so that we incentivize higher labor force participation. Those are all things that the administration could do today. Uh, but as I said, I'm not holding my breath that we're actually going to see any of those actions. No, definitely do not hold your breath on that one. Uh, Tyler, thanks very much for being here this morning. Tyler Goodsby joining us on the heels of the GDP, which was worse than expected, and yet markets this morning are at the highs of the morning. Dow Industrials right now up 210 points. Tyler, we will see you.